Hi there, Jono here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Surfshark using WireGuard on OpenSense. So the first thing we need to do is generate a key pair and a configuration file. So in your Surfshark account, under VPN, click on Manual Setup. Once that is done, we can click on the Router WireGuard option and click on I don't have a key pair. Give the key pair a name and once done, click Next then click on generate a new key pair. This will generate a public and private key. From there click on choose location and then choose the location you want the VPN to connect to. So in this case we will find Italy and then choose Rome. Once it has opened you can click on the download button and this will download a configuration file. I'm just going to save it to the desktop. Once that is done you can close all of this and then when you open the configuration file this is the settings we'll use. The next step is to create the WireGuard connection. So in OpenSense under VPN WireGuard instances we will create a new instance so you need to give your interface a name so in this case I'm going to call it surfshark underscore RT for Italy underscore WAN if we head over to our configuration file we'll copy the private key and then we can paste it into the private key field. The default listening port is 51820. What you'll do for every instance you use, you'll just increase the number or make each port unique. So in this case, we'll use port 51821. The next thing we need to do is go to the configuration file and copy and paste the tunnel address. So in this case they want us to use 10.14.0.2.16. We need to disable routes and then if we enable advanced mode under gateway we need to use an RP address that's different to the tunnel address and that is not used anywhere else on OpenSense. So in this case we have no other network that has 10.13.0.1 so we will use that. If you would like to add multiple instances you can then continue with the same RP range so in other words your next instance you'll use a gateway 10.13.0.2 and then your next instance 10.13.0.3 and then so on and so forth. We won't be setting up any DNS servers here. I'll show you how to do it later on in the video. Once you're done you can save that. Next we need to create a peer. So under the peer tab click on the plus button. For the name I'm going to call it Surfshark underscore Rome since this is Rome. Again, you can name it whatever you want. Then again, we're going to go to the configuration file. This time we'll copy the public key. And we'll paste it in the field. So the allowed RPs field is where you'll input all the RP addresses of either the networks or the hosts that you would allow to use this, this specific WireGuard tunnel. So if you have specific hosts or networks that you want, you can fill it in here. However, doing it this way, every time you want to add or remove RPs from here, you will need to restart the entire WireGuard instance. So instead, we will allow all RPs, so 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 slash 0 to be allowed through. And then instead, on the firewall section, we will then block or allow networks and hosts through that. So adding and removing networks and hosts 
don't require a wirecard instant restart for the address we will again go to the configuration file just copy and paste what they have there and the same with the port Under instance, we will select the instance that we just created. And then for the keep live interval, we'll set it to 25. When you're done, you can save. Remember to enable WireGuard and then click apply. If you go to the status page, you should see that the connection gets both send and receive data. So you know that the connection is up and running. Okay, on to step three, where we will create the Wirecard interface. So we'll go under interfaces and then assignments. Now under the add a new interface options under devices, you should see the new Wirecard instance that we created. We'll click add and save it. Once it is saved, on the left, we'll click on that interface and enable it. The very important step is you have to set the MTU and the MSS. If you don't do this correctly, it will not work. So for both, we'll put 1420. Once that is done, we'll leave everything as is. Click Save and Apply. The next step is to create a gateway from the WireGuard instance. So under System, gateways configuration we'll click on the plus button to add a new gateway you can give it a name and then give it a description for the interface we'll select the surfshark interface that we created and then for the IP address we need to put in the same gateway that we used when creating the instance so in this case it was 10 13 0 1 we will enable the far gateway option and then if you want to do gateway monitoring you can untick this and put in an RP so we will do this but what I'm going to do is for now we will tick disable and save it I'm going to go back to the WireGuard status page copy the public RP of the WireGuard server then when we go back to gateways, I'll edit that gateway we created. I'll untick disable gateway monitoring. I'll paste the IP address of the server and then save it. Once it's saved, you can apply it. And then you just need to give it a few seconds. You will see that the gateway should start showing online and everything should be up and running. The next step is to create two aliases. So this will help us to create the firewall rules and the outbound rules. So under firewall aliases, we'll click the add button. You can give it a name. In this case, we will, I'll call it WireGuard VPN Hosts. So these will be the hosts or more specifically the networks that I'll allow through. So for the description, I'm just going to write networks and hosts to use Surfshark uh, WireGuard VPN. And I want to change it to networks. Under content, I'm going to put the LAN IP address since this instance or this tutorial, we only have a LAN network. Since the LAN is on 192.168.1.1, I'll add that network. Only. If you have other networks that you want to access the VPN, you'll supply it here. The next alias we'll create it's just a list of all private networks. This we'll use for the 
firewall rules so I like to call it private networks because it's easier for me to see from a glance what it is and then under the content you must just fill these all in so just pause it here and then make sure you fill those three in and then for the description I'm just going to call it all private IP ranges we can save and then if you scroll down you can click the apply button we will then move on to create the outbound rules so under firewall NAT outbound first thing we need to do is change it into hybrid mode once you have set it as hybrid mode you can create a new rule so the interface will be the wireguard interface you created the source address we're going to choose the host alias that we created and then we can give it a description in this case I'm going to call it wireguard roam out we can save that and then click on apply changes the next step is to create the firewall rules so under rules for all the networks that you want to access this wireguard VPN you need to recreate this rule for each one so since we only have a LAN network for this tutorial we will click on LAN and create a new rule for the source we're going to choose the host alias again that we created and for the destination we're going to set it to invert and then the private network alias that we created so this just means any data that is from our LAN network that is not destined for a private network will then be able to go through the wireguard instance you can give it a description so in this case we'll call it land to wireguard and then for the gateway we will set the surfshark wireguard gateway that we created once that is saved we need to make sure that this rule is at the top of the list so you'll click on the checkbox next to the rule and then click on the arrow of the topmost rule that will move it all the way to the top from there you can click apply to save the changes yeah so the next step is to create a kill switch so if the wireguard instance goes down this will stop any traffic from going out the normal gateway so what we need to do is edit that firewall rule and we need to show the advanced options and under set local tag you can type this in so this will just be the tag that all the data coming from the LAN will be tagged with you can save and apply that and then on the WAN interface we're going to create a new rule and what this rule will do is we will block any traffic or any data that has that tag in it so we'll change the direction to out can give a description so in this case for the description I'm just going to call it block traffic meant for wireguard VPN and under the advanced features again this time if we go to match local tag we'll paste that same tag in so this will help block any traffic that was actually meant for the wireguard instance once done you can save and apply it we can now move over into testing the VPN connection so I'll open a new tab and then go to Google and straight away you can see we are presented with Google's terms and conditions in Italian we can then go and search what's my IP and since we're using a VPN Google is obviously going to make sure we're not a robot if we go to any 
what's my IP sort of website, we can see that our IP address has changed and it now thinks we are in Rome. Now, if we go and do a DNS test, and straight away we will see that it still picks up my IP address. So this is considered a DNS leak, which is most probably not what you want. So in the next step, we will go and fix it. So the last step is to fix a DNS leak. So by default, OpenSense uses Unbound DNS. So under Services, we'll click on Unbound DNS. The nice thing about using Unbound DNS is that you can still use overrides, block lists, access lists, etc. while using the VPN. So if we click on the query forwarding, from here, this is where we can add our external DNS servers. So if we look back at the configuration file, you can use Surfshark's DNS servers. So you can copy and paste those in. But please note you don't have to use Surfshark's DNS servers, you can use any other that you wish. So once we've added in the DNS servers, we can apply it. Just to show you, if we use block lists, the block lists will still apply. So for example, I've blocked Facebook. So if we try to go to Facebook, it will still block that DNS query. So this is a nice thing of still using unbound DNS. Rather than setting the DNS via DHCP, or setting it up directly on the device you're using it from. So if we go back and do a DNS leak test, you can see now that it's not showing my IP address and instead it's showing Surfshark's DNS servers. And then for example, we can go back to Unbound DNS and under Query Forwarding, we can change it to use Cloudflare's DNS. And if we go back and refresh the DNS leak page, you should see that there, all the Cloudflare servers are popping up now. So that is how you can stop DNS leaks from showing your IP address. If this video helped you, Please like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it, it helps grow the channel. And until then, I'll see you in the next one.